captures Sakura, Shaun, and friends is a popular ongoing fanfic by Wish Love, and it's based off of Clown's card capture Sakura. And in each episode, we'll do a deep dive of a chapter. Let's get into it. So, Melanie, without going into deep details, would you consider that you have a pretty good idea of the family drama, or do you consider yourself as sheltered? <laughs> um, I mean, every family has its own drama. But I definitely wouldn't say we're like super dramatic, and but I, d I definitely wasn't sheltered. My mom was always very honest with me about absolutely everything. So, yeah, I definitely feel like I know people that are definitely very much sheltered from it, and then I know some people that are like waist deep in family drama. So I feel like I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. Yeah. See, like in my situ my case, it's like. There was a lot of family drama going on, but my parents made sure to shelter my brothers and me from it. It's like, that's their problems, that's their lives. We don't really need to, like, meddle and mess with them. We don't have to be, like... They, did, they didn't want us to, like, get into all of that. So my brothers and I knew nothing. I was super sheltered to the point where life only became hard for me when I entered adulthood getting married. That's when it's like, oh, I have to do everything for myself now. <laughs> Uh, 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 you know, just because I was hit with so many things that my parents would usually take care of for me. Now, on the flip side, my ex was actually very involved in his family's affairs because his parents' English and French was very poor. So he, he was the one who had to step up and he had to go through everything and, and government wise, just that. So he knew everything going on in his family. I knew nothing going on in mine. So, today we'll be discussing Chapter 31, Unraveled Secrets. This was released on June 6, 2001, which is one month and two days after the release of Chapter 30. All the days. <laughs> <laughs> the word count is 15,090 words, and this takes place during summer, um, while they're still in ninth grade. Summary. Sakura and Sharon arrived in Tokyo, and Sakura used a shield to hide the tracker. Sharon told her he had business elsewhere and that he'd find Sakura at the end of the day, leaving her disgruntled. Sharon went to the police station to look at Kaito's file using his family's influence to get in and to keep Sakura out. He, as he figured, Kaito's forgetfulness about the name of the person filing the charges against him would only hurt her. They met up at the end of the day, facing thugs and checking into a hotel for the night. Sakura overheard Sharon say that the phantom was loose. The next morning at the police station, Sharon was shocked to find out that, sorry, the next day at the police station, Sakura was shocked to find out that Sharon was responsible for keeping her out. She ran into Tomoyo, who was also in Tokyo, and entered the police station with her. Tomoyo was there to see her estranged father, the Tokyo police chief. Once she met him, she accepted him on the spot. Sakura then learned uh, that the person filing the suit against Kaitu was Kinamoto Fujinto, head of the massive business empire, and Sakura's grandfather. She and Tomoya snuck into the man's house, and then when the maid recognized her as Fujitaka's daughter, she explained to the Kinamoto family history. Sakura and Tomoyo were then directed to where Fujika, Sakura's <laughs> uncle, was at Kinhoshi University. Sharon was also at the university doing research about the Kinamotos and followed Tomoyo and Sakura when he spotted them. Sakura found her father and witnessed Fujishika's bitterness towards her brother and she and saw that she couldn't talk to the people who treated, sorry, and saw that she couldn't talk to people who treated her family horribly. She told Tomoyo that she was still mad at Sharon for keeping such a secret from her. Sharon tried to leave before Sakura found him and ran into Tamura Asuma, who convinced him to face her. When Sharon did, he was surprised with Sakura's calm and distant reaction. Later on, Sakura let Sharon in on her feelings towards her father's family and admitted that she was mad at him. She reached out for the necklace for comfort and realized it was no longer around her neck. 
She was ready to break down, but Sharon held her tightly in his arms. Some light teasing got him her forgiveness and said that he'll find her the necklace. Sharon also said they'll continue with the fighting lessons and that he'll take her out for dinner for, and something fun. She made fun of him for asking her on a date, but got shy when he asked what if it really was one. Sakura called him a hypocrite and they laughed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As she should. Yeah. Okay, disclaimer. I don't know how to pronounce Sakura's uncle's name and Sakura's grandfather's name. It's like, I'm just going to say like Fujishika, even though you say it differently. I think I say Fujinto, Fujika, yeah. Fujata, and then, uh, what was the girl's name? Fujiko. Fujiko, yeah. I yeah. think that's how I pronounced it. Fujiko. Oh, I think I said Fujiko. Yeah, so... But, I mean... I think I'm just gonna say Sakura's grandfather, Sakura's uncle, Sakura's <laughs> uncle, Sakura's grandfather. That works for me. I'll know who you're talking about. Even even I, it's like, I'm having a hard time. It's like, okay, which one ends with the Ika and which one ends with the Into? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, that was a nightmare to do for the audio part. <laughs> yes. So it looks like Fuji Shinto is, the, is the grandfather. So uh -huh. Shinto is the grandfather and Shika is is the uncle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so that, we're going to have our mouth full <laughs> <laughs> while we cover this chapter. So this chapter opens up to Sakura sleeping in Sharon's arms while they were riding the unicorn, which is such a romantic image. I really like the detail of how Midnight Star goes from black to white. Yes, I think that's very clever and very cute. So for Melanie's birthday, uh, there was this chairlift event at a ski lodge. So basically they were closed for the ski season. But what they did is they decorated their mountains with lights and a music show. So we drove up the mountain <laughs> took the chairlift down, um, then walked another path, we took the chairlift back up, and as we took the chairlift up, it was six kilometers of the music and light show, and it was very cool. But like, just going down, I was telling Melanie, it's like, prior to this, I was thinking, oh, when I was organizing this trip, I, don't, I didn't have anything new trials related because it's like so much to do in Montreal. But then when we were on the chairlift, I'm like, Melanie, it's like we're riding the unicorn. <laughs> It was so cool because when we went down the mountain, it was pitch black. It was, and we were just kind of sit upon the ski lift. And it really did feel like you were just flying through the air. Cause you know, I imagine soccer, and we sure like Toya, the Toya, sorry, the Tokyo lights and stuff below were probably really bright and stuff. But you know, once they probably got out to country parts of Japan. So it really did feel like we were flying on like the unicorn there for a minute. It was so cool. Yeah, and then on the way up for the actual show, with the lights and the music and the effects, I turned to Melanie, and I'm like, Melanie, it's like we're in a fantasy. For real, though, I really did feel like this, like, I honestly felt like it was such a spiritual experience, like, I really felt like it was the god of the mountain was, like, welcoming us, and it made, like, the forest below us really felt like it was alive with all, like, the music and the lights and stuff. It was so cool, but yeah, it... When she mentioned the fantasy, I was like, yes, this is 100% the fantasy. <laughs> and then when we got back up, it's like, we climbed Mount Kumori. <laughs> Kumatori. Kumatori Mountain. Yeah, and then I was joking because we had to drive up like these really like super dark mountain roads and stuff. And I was like, let's just not go towards the cliff, Priya. <laughs> let's not go to the Mount Kumatori cliff. <laughs> yeah, 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 we didn't see a cliff and we were more than happy about that. <laughs> uh, so... The police are relentless, and they're still hot on the locket's trail. They, Sakura and Sharon use the shield, but there definitely still is a question of whether they're going to keep its, uh, po how, if it's going to keep its potency. Right. So, do you remember Sharon's personal business when you did the audiobook? Um, I kind of remembered that he wasn't... Like, he did something at the police station to where soccer couldn't get in. Like, I sort of remembered that part. But as far as, like, the him guessing Kai's motives and stuff, like, that I completely forgot. And I was even telling Priya, like, you know, when Kai is like, it was Kino, Kino, whatever. You know, I don't really remember who it was. Like, I was kind of like soccer at the moment, too. And I was like, yeah, I believe him. Maybe he just forgot. And then it wasn't until I did the audiobook I remembered. I was like, oh, so Sharon knew this whole time. But yeah, I kind of forgot that part. 
say, like, I felt I was also discovering the scene for the first time. I had no idea why he was at the police station in the first place. So it's like, I wonder how Sharon knew the truth. Like, I wonder, like, I think, I, like, at first I was asking myself, like, well, how did Sharon know that the truth was going to hurt Sakura? But then we go back to, like, Sakaichu kun just, like, tripping over his words. And it's like Sh Sakura might have believed him, but 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 Sharon picked up what he dropped and and ran with it. Yeah, I just think Sharon is a very um, perspective? perceptive. Perceptive. That's sort of perspective. Thank you. I think Sharon's just a very perceptive person, and so I think he caught on very quickly. And then you know, while he also mentions while Sakura was sleeping the whole time on the unicorn, he had a lot of time to think to himself. So, anyways, so. Yeah, and so I think he kind of had a guess, and then when he found out who it was, and he went to the library and did all his research, and that's when he found out about Sakura's family and all that. Hmm. So, the gang of guys is so creepy. It, like, sent chills down my spine. <laughs> now, I'm glad that Sharon came when he did, even though we know Sakura could handle herself, as we saw in the chapter. Yeah. They spat a little bit, but Sharon made it up by getting a fancy hotel room for them. Love the way that Wish Chen made all of the rooms with like a double bed booked. It's like, hmm, huh, how convenient. All the rooms with double beds are booked. Uh, my favorite, this is one of my favorite tropes actually, but my only wish is that I wish she would have made them sleep in the same bed, but maybe that's 30-year-old Melanie talking here. <laughs> yeah, and, and we do get that, like, later on in the series, for sure. So, Sharon paid with the same credit card that he bought the necklace with, and I like how we got the continuity. It's like, oh, he just paid it off, and here he is, loading more money on it again. <laughs> wish Chan understanding bills at age 13. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> So, there's a news announcement talking about how the police lost track of the Kaichu magician. My question is, how does the media get a hold of so many details of an ongoing investigation? Very true. It's like as if the police department is bragging about their incompetence. <laughs> so, when Sharon lets it slip that he knew that Sakura was turned away from the police station without her telling him, I was like, Red flag! Mm -hmm. Red flag! Mm -hmm. I guess I like the way that he is cringing over the fact that he's being so discouraging, but if Sakura doesn't know his heartache, then it doesn't make a difference for her. Again, communication! They're yeah. not very good about communication. <laughs> now he's like deliberately keeping stuff about her, except now it's like we see that he feels even worse. Yes. So the next day, the guard did the worst job of blowing up uh, Sakura Sharon's spots. It's like, oh yes, there was a teenager who lives about your age with brown hair who said you were not to come in here. A Lee Clan emblem. Like, yeah, he is. He from the Lee Clan. Like, there's only that really narrows it down. It's <laughs> like you could be as naive as you want, but the moment you you mentioned that Lee Clan emblem, there's no hiding. Mm -mm, nope. He should have like said, "Don't let this girl in." And because he knew that she was gonna try and and yeah. don't tell her that don't explain my identity keep yeah. my identity a secret yeah. like, come on Sharon do a thorough job or come on guard Aww. it's like if she's going through all this trouble to make sure this girl doesn't get in don't make it that like you're just bragging about who it is <laughs> you think he, and the thing is though you think he have enough respect for the Lee clan to keep his mouth shut right well, maybe, but honestly, he it sounds like he didn't even really know who they were. I guess, so I guess. So maybe he just doesn't understand, like, loose, what's it, loose... Loose song? lips sink ships. Yeah. 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 Loose lips sink ships. Yes. <laughs> you tell I'm a little tired. You're happy to, like, help me out. <laughs> it's okay. Then, to our surprise, we ran into Tomoyo. Oh. So, I love how Tomoyo has more power than the Lee Clan. <laughs> Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because we have the bombshell that her father is the chief of the Tokyo wow. Department. And that's what I meant about my previous, like, earlier question. It's like, uh, do you, do, are you sheltered from, like, all of this family stuff? Mm -hmm. Or, or do you just, like, pretty much know everything that's going on? Yeah. I don't think, like, I never really shared with my friends what was going on with, like, my parents like I knew mm. everything that was going on with my parents but yeah 
I never really shared and opened up with my friends. I even kind of sort of lied a little bit and just said like, oh, my dad is blah, 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 you know, just to kind of make it not seem as bad as what it actually was. So I can kind of see why Tameo has kept this to herself for so long. I kind of understand that a little bit. Mm -hmm. We spend some time with Sharon, and we get how he puts the pieces together about who filed the suit against Kaitu. So any questions that we had was, was pretty much sought, answered at this point. Mm -hmm. And we get the backstory of Tomoya's father. And I'm so glad that Wishchan took the time to make this a plot point that is woven into like Sakura's storyline. Because Tomoya's monologue where she talks about her father is so poignant and really some of your best voice work yet. Thank you. I appreciate that. It was not a very hard role to act because I've, I've been there before. <laughs> and then when we got the reunion, it was true. It was really heartfelt. <laughs> so uh, Tomoya's father also blew up Sharon's spot as well, which is mortifying <laughs> for him. <laughs> we finally learned the truth so that the suit is filed by none other than Kinomoto Fujishinto, a.k.a. Sakura's paternal grandfather. Sharon does some digging on Fujishinto and is shocked to find out that he is loaded. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if Sakura grew up with all of the money in the world. She wouldn't be as down to earth as she is now, that's for sure. And I just have this vision in my head where it's like you have Kira Chen tasking her to find the cards and then she's just gonna make her servants do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I feel like this is I don't know, but this is just my little head canon about this whole thing is I think in the future this is gonna be a way for Sakura to be able to marry Shaorong, because not only is she the card mistress, but she also comes from a powerful family. So therefore, I think that's why the lead plan will allow them to get married in the future. Mm. Just coming from my Korean drama land of things, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> so Sakura and Tomoyo break into her grandfather's house. Mm -hmm. I love that Toya was the one who called while she was there. Mm -hmm. But my question is, why did it take weeks for him to call her cell? Right. It's like, I called home so many times and you didn't answer. And like, she has a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe that was back in the day when data wasn't free. Maybe. So maybe he could only call our cell phone certain times a day. Yeah. Do you guys remember that? Like, if you had T-Mobile, you could only call T-Mobile people, or you only had free data after, like, 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we get to meet Mori, which I'm excited about because she has all the tea. <laughs> yes. Now, as a sidebar, in CCS Clear Card, Clamp names one of Sakura's teachers Mori. Uh, yeah, I think I remember Wish Chan saying yes. that in her little breakdown of, of the episode. Yeah, I wouldn't re remember that on my own, but because uh, Wish Chan flagged that in her in her uh, episode recap, it's like a little piece of trivia that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole Kinomoto family history, but if anybody just wants to reread that part of the story, I extracted it as a second arc appendix number two in my Amethyst Beloved's Neutral Summaries. So it's all there. Because it's, it's, it's long, and it's messy, and we, we all pretty much have a gist of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor but, Fujika, is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> poor, poor Fujika. Doesn't the story of the Kinemoto siblings kind of make you think of the Dumbledore siblings? Oh, 100%, yes. Rivalry yes. between two brothers, sister who died too soon. Yeah, oh my god, yes. Yes. And one brother being very um, guilty about it. Yeah, I never thought of that, but you're 100% correct. Now, this chapter came out six years before Deathly Hallows. Ah, so Wish Chan. Yeah, so Wish Chan couldn't have used it as an influence. Uh, so I think that the parallel, still, I think the parallel is very interesting. So JK stole it from Wish Of Chan. course. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> my news reporter breaking news wish chan is the original creator of the dumbledore storyline jk <laughs> rowling in fact stole it <laughs> still a better plot than fantastic beats <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> so 
I was going to say that it was strange that her father's portrait is still up after Maury made it clear that he was pretty much scrubbed out of the family's history right. until she slipped in that it was in a room that was barely used. Yes. Yeah. 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 So she covered her tracks there. Now, we learned that uh, Fujitaka's first love married her brother. Now, this is way into the future, but isn't she the one who ends up adopting Nina? Yes. Yes. So, yes. a.k.a. her sister-in-law? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Now, did you notice through the whole time that, that you were reading this chapter, which Chen doesn't give her a name? Oh. Uh, oh. The, not the sister. I'm talking about the wife of the brother. Fujitaka's first love. Oh. She doesn't get a name. Does she not? No. Well, at least not in chapter 31. She she has all these scenes and they never they never call her, like she never gives her a name. Wow. Yeah. I swear he greets her. Yeah, well he says hello to her and stuff like that, but he doesn't say her name. Huh. Has she ever been named? Yes. In Arc Four, her name is Hisano. He's, yeah, definitely. Yeah, wow, good pickup. Yeah. Very good pickup. The only reason that it kind of struck me is because I actually drew a fan art of her, <laughs> of which is which is really funny. <laughs> the um, it was for for Christmas um, challenge, and one of them one of the prompts were writing a letter to Santa. So I had her and Nina like write like Nina writing a letter, and she's like standing behind her. <laughs> so so that's how come it's like okay, well I know she had a name because I had to like extract the scene where I drew this fan art. So I went into my author's notes or my artist's notes and then I found her name, but it's not in this chapter. Wow, good pickup. Hmm. Now, I have to say, I forgot that Mori is uh, Fujiko's mother. So Mori is Fujiko's grandmother. It's Mori's daughter that's Fujiko's mom. Hold on, hold on. Fujiko's daughter. Mm -hmm. So it, so it's Mori's Mo daughter. Oh. Is Fujika's mother. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I thought I thought the grandfather slept with the housekeeper, and that 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 was the yeah, housekeeper gave the birth. House, the housekeeper is Mori's daughter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, Mori, okay, okay. So Mori is. That's why Mori loved Fujika so much because she was her grandmother. Oh, okay. She's legitimately her grandmother. Okay, okay. I, I couldn't get that uh, from the chapter. Interesting. Okay, afterwards we have Sharon putting the pieces together of how Sakura must know the truth <laughs> at the university. I loved how Sakura almost ran into her father. <laughs> uh, now, the Kinomoto brother run-in was uh, quite shocking as well, even though I did remember that this scene happened. That was a difficult scene to pull off in the audiobook. Hopefully it came across okay, but it was really hard for me to try to differentiate their voices enough to be to make it obvious that two different people were talking. At the end of the day, they are brothers. Yeah, that's true. And just how like teenage Riren's voice is similar to Sharon's mm -hmm. voice. It is not only father and son, but the son the father was the son's age. Yeah. So <laughs> so you gotta you get a pass. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was so sad that Fujitaka never heard, let me the truth about Fujiko. Right. But, you know, guys, we have to think about it this way. This is before the age of social media. Of course, of course. This is before the, the age of cell phones. Mm -hmm. So there is, so it's not like Fujita could have, like, kept in contact with his sister. Mm -hmm. It's not like he could have, like, found her on Facebook or Googled her and found out what happened to her. So, like, keep that in mind, guys. Like, <laughs> Like, because at first when I read this part in the audiobook, I was like, really? How could you not have looked up what happened to your sister? But then I had to, like, put really yourself. put myself back in the era. And it's like, no, this was before social media. This is before Google. Like, mm -hmm. internet was just kind of still kind of sort of in its baby-ish era. So think, so think about it that way, guys. Yeah. Like, if anybody would have told Fujitaka about the fate of his sister, it would be his ex, who is, like, married to his brother. But we even got, like, confirmation in this chapter is that he wrote her a letter, but then his brother intercepted it. Right. So that's, like, completely cut contact. Right. So I forgot that Asuma was in this chapter. <laughs> uh, it's cute that he wanted to surprise Arima. <laughs> Anyway, glad to see Sharon having some guy talk. I like his line about how the bravest people 
could be the biggest cowards of all time. 100% true. We have a Sakura and Sharon confrontation. And I like how Sakura was keeping a level head. Mm -hmm. Because all through arc one, even like, you know, first half of arc two, it's like they would constantly bicker. They would mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. They would get they would just be on in each other's last nerve. But but this 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 time around, Sakura decided to like not give in to her I think I think it's just because she was just so mad. Yes. I think it was like a different level of mad. Yes. Yeah, I just think I'm kind of the same way. When I get really mad, I just get really quiet, like super duper quiet. And so I think this is just kind of a way of just showing that soccer is maturing. Mm -hmm. I think is what it kind of boils down to is she's not going to have like a, she's not going to throw a fit like a little child <laughs> anymore. She's not going to like be all emotional like a little preteen. Like it's really shows she's on like the verge of being a teenager mm -hmm. and that she's maturing. So yeah. So it completely freaked Sharon out. <laughs> uh, I think it was like, but but then they were able to like talk it through. So I think this is one of their most mature uh, conflict and resolution yes. yet. <laughs> Very much of uh, a husband being scared of when his wife gets really mad and we just get really quiet and we just don't say anything, but they know they're in trouble. And mm -hmm. that's like kind of what the scene gave me vibes of. <laughs> So Sakura's necklace is missing, and I thought that was Kaichi Magician, but no, she legit loses it. I and, think the thugs steal it. Um, I think they had a hand in it, for sure. Um, and then we get another S&S &S hug. It was really sweet, and we get Sakura forgiving Sharon, which is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sakura makes Sharon promise her to teach her martial arts again, but I don't rem remember if this actually happens. Yeah, I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Uh, and then when the chapter ends, Sharon tries to ask Sakura on a legit date, but Homegirl has friend zoned him hard. As he deserves. I'm so proud of Sakura. She's like doubling down. It's like, no, you're a hypocrite. No, you're yes. a double hypocrite. No, 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 no. I'm like, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not going to fall for any of that. I am so proud of her. I am so like so proud of Wish Chan that she wouldn't just have Sakura just roll over and be like, "Oh, it's okay how you talked to me this past <laughs> winter. I will totally forgive you." Like, no. Like, I freaking love that she like calls him out of this crap, and she's like, "No, you're a hypocrite." Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. No, you have to work for it, Sean. You have to work for it. Yes. So, Dark Forces Corner. We open up with SNS using the unicorn as transportation, and the shield was used to hide the tracker. We have a mention of the phantom when Sharon says that it was free in the middle of their first night of Tokyo. And uh, I think this is the is this the chapter when when the phantom is speaking to Sharon? Next chapter. Uh, next chapter. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. That's the next chapter. Oh, because okay. Yeah, yeah. He he leaves the police. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, that hasn't happened yet. Sakura uses the rope to sneak in and yes. uh, for a second I was trying to remember which CCS card was that but I remembered it was a new trials original. So again us being completely wrong that mm -hmm. Wish Chan never uses her, <laughs> her cards. We just keep being like oh oops oops sorry Wish Chan. Uh, it was a lot of fun seeing Dark Forces in action and she even used OG Windy for her landing. So, fan art spotlight. Chapter 31 also didn't have a fan art linked to it when I was doing my blog, and there was no chance that I would find another artwork to fit my chapter in New Trials Revisited Project. So I was very ambitious, and I drew Sakura and Sharon and Midnight Star. Aww, I've never seen this one. Very, very cute. Yes, so I wrote, I did this in January 2018, and uh, and Sharon is uh, flying, and, and Wish Chan is in his arms, and she's sleeping. Wish Chan? Sorry. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry Wish about Chan that. Wish Chan wishes she was in Sharon's Wish Chan arms. wishes, and so do I, and so does Melanie. <laughs> so Sakura, she's, she's sleeping in Sharon's <laughs> arms on the unicorn. And it looks so magical. And as as ambitious as it was, I actually had fun, like uh, drawing the horse and drawing yeah, the wings. That looks really good. Yeah, thank you. That was me cuddled all up next to you mm -hmm. on the ski lift. Yeah, because it was freaking cold. It turns out on top of a mountain. <laughs> yeah, it is new. And what's funny is that like 
Melanie and I, we were dressed so cute in Quebec City with our sundresses and our skirts. And right before leaving for the excursion, I'm like, wait a minute, we're going on top of a mountain and it's going to be cold. <laughs> Melanie, we have to change. <laughs> yeah, like it didn't even occur to either of us because yesterday it was, how would you say it, Celsius? It oh, oh, I would say like high 20s Celsius. Yeah, Fahrenheit, it was like a beautiful like 70 yeah. degrees. So like, you know, we were both all cute and never would have thought. And then thank God <laughs> Priya thought of it because we would have been absolutely miserable. <laughs> Like, thankfully, like, I put on jeans and, like, I had, like, a hoodie. And I was, like, just on the verge of being cold but not, like, mm -hmm. uncomfortable. But if we would have gone in our cute little dresses, there's <laughs> no way. There's no way. I don't think we would have been able to finish. I think we would have had to leave early somehow. <laughs> I think we would have finished it, but we would have been quite miserable. Oh, my God. <laughs> we were, I was joking that there was these guys riding around on, like, their uh, ATVs and stuff. And I was, like, we, we probably would have to have one of them, like, drive us back. <laughs> to our car. <laughs> uh, but thankfully, at the last minute, I'm like, no, we need to dress up for this. And then when we got up on the mountain, people were literally wearing their, like, uh, winter hats, winter coats. And it's like, yep, yep, yep. We Right decision, right decision. Thank God. Thank God for Priya. <laughs> so what's fun about the prompt is that I named it Picking Up the Pieces for my 100 Themes project. And it was actually empty for six years until I drew this fan art, so this fit right in. Aww. Now it's time for the author's note. Wish Chan. Sorry it took me so long to get this chapter up. I had exams. Hee <laughs> hee, I'll be able to update more frequently because it's almost vacation now. Once more, emails are cherished. Do 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 do. Do do do. So let's see, as some people predicted, the person filing the suit against Kaido Magician is Kinamoto Fujita, Sakura's father's father. Oh yeah, and remember Fujiko Kinamoto from chapter 12, Till You Turn to Me? She turned out to be Fujita's little half-sister. Poor Fujiko. Hmm. I've always wondered about Fujita's past when I watched and read the manga and CCS. I mean, how perfect can a man be? So I included a brief background of Fujata's life. Also, Tomeo finally confronted her father. You may have noticed a subtle hint about her father in the previous chapters. What's going to happen to Kaido Magician? Coming next chapter. Ah, and all the confusing background stuff is the synopsis to the action next chapter. Oh yeah, and is Shadow making a date proposal, or is it just good friends eating dinner out together occasion? I'll leave it for you to decide. Sob, sob, soccer star, crystal diamond, necklace is stolen. What shall she do? Oh yeah, does this, okay, here we And she also includes a really cool kind of magician fan art on her actual website. It has his criminal number and there's a picture of him with his sunglasses and then also a picture where he takes his sunglasses off. We can see the cross earring he wears all the time. That's her um, version of the Wanted poster. Yes. And she used the uh, spray paint like um, tip thing to to like pretend that Kai graffitied his Wanted poster. Yes. Mm -hmm. So cool. Yeah, but yeah, I always kind of also wondered about Fujata's mm -hmm. past. And again, I just love the world building on um, Wish Chan's part and. Yeah, like, we've already learned so much about Nadechiko's past and Sharon's father's past, so it's nice to see, like, um, some, some world building on Tomoya's father and uh, Sakura's own father. Yes. So you've been listening to New Trials, the podcast, where it must rain for there to be a rainbow. You've been listening to New Trials, the podcast. Please be sure to check out the audiobook version of this fan fiction that you can find anywhere that you can also, please be sure to check out the Facebook fan page for New Trials, where a big part of our discussions happen nowadays. And please be sure to stick around next time when we discuss Chapter 32, Believe in Me When the Sun Rises.